Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by, this is Esra. Today I want to share another Dollar Tree DIY with bamboo cutting boards. This time I made this tray, it has that boho and little bit rustic touch. I really loved how it turned out. If you wonder how I made this tray, keep on watching. Most of the items are from Dollar Tree and I will also put the items that I used in the description box below. I used two bamboo cutting boards and two wooden rulers from Dollar Tree and some acrylic paints, E6000 and these rustic looking handles. I got these handles from Amazon and I will leave the link below in the description box for them. It is $2.60 and the package has two handles inside. You also need sponge and a stencil and this stencil from Waverly and I will also leave the link for this in the description box. And I also used 3 eighths of an inch screws for the handles. The handles in the package have their own screws but these bamboo cutting boards are very thin so I had to get these screws and I got them from Lowe's it's only a dollar and 28 cents. And I also used drill and utility knife and scotch tape and a mud brush and sandpaper too. I like using daylight when I record my videos but I started this project at night. Anyways, first cutting board is very thin so I could not use dowels to join them together. Second, when I put the pieces together I realized that pieces are not flat so I sanded them by using Dollar Tree sandpaper. Of course you can buy a bigger piece bamboo cutting board from somewhere else and skip all this part. Before I joined the bamboo boards together, I decided where my handle pieces be. Then I flipped the boards and decided where I want these rulers be. I'm going to use these rulers, I wanted extra support and they are going to help since the boards are very thin and I cannot use dowel. First, I removed the plastic piece from the wooden roller. It's very easy to peel, they don't need much force. These rulers are a little longer than I want them to be so I use this utility knife to cut them. I didn't want to go to garage to get another tool to cut these. I was feeling a little lazy at night. After cutting them, I painted them with these acrylic paints from Apple Barrel. I used the color Nutmeg and a little bit black just to darken that brown color. My brush was damp by the way when I was applying. It turned out nice, I like this color on this bamboo board. I use my 
my E6000 to connect these two cutting boards together that I sanded the sides earlier. Guys, if you have those parallel clamps, use those. I don't have one yet, that's why I'm not using it here. At least not yet. I'm planning to get one in the future. I also added my wooden pieces with E6000 at the same time and I let E6000 to work more than 24 hours. When you use any glue like E6000, make sure you're using something that you don't care underneath because some glue will go down. When I flipped the boards, like I expected, there was some dried glue underneath. But it's not a problem, I sanded it with the Dollar Tree sandpaper. After you sand it, don't forget to get rid of the dust. You don't want little particles when you start to paint. Now it is time to make the stencil ready. I will leave the link down below for the stencil that I'm using. I use some scotch tape to secure my stencil so it doesn't move when I apply the paint. I used Apple Barrel Acrylic Paint color Snowflake. I'm applying this paint with a sponge brush from Dollar Tree again, but I would recommend you to use those round sponge brushes. It is so easy to use this stencil. This part was the most fun part of the whole project. After my first coat dried, I applied second coat. After my second coat dried, I removed my stencil gently. It was so satisfying to see the design. And here is the design. Isn't that lovely? After I am done with my stencil, I washed it with warm water. Now it is like brand new again. To seal my paint, I used my Mod Podge in matte finish. I did two coats. I didn't apply Mod Podge just on the design. I applied on the whole board. I also applied two coats of Mod Podge for the pieces which are at the back. And then I use my drill for the screws. If you are afraid to drill too further than you need, you can use duct tape just like I did here. It really helps. Now it is time to add the screws. These are very short screws, 3 eighths of an inch. And the process is done. I really loved how it turned out. Let me know what you think about it and if you give this DIY a try, tag me on Instagram with my username Israelity so I can see. And don't forget to like if you like this tutorial. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, so I will see you next time. Take care.